Good morning and a very, very warm welcome to our first time back together in church for what probably seems like a very, very long time. Obviously there are differences we are going to have to get used to. We can't see each other smile, our glasses keep steaming up, all those things that I'm sure we will adjust to. You will have noticed that the communion table is here. The reason for that, the reason we brought it forward, is because we are recording the service so that it can go up online later on today for those who are not able to be here, so that at least they might be able to watch that recording and share with us in that way. And if I preside from up the altar in the normal position, the recording doesn't work. Um, so add to your prayers that the recording does work this morning so that we can share with those who are not able to be with us this morning. Also, you'll notice that we've got a different order of service. We've got the order of service that we've been using on Zoom for the last few months. The reason we're using that one is partly so that people at home can follow it, but mostly because one of the restrictions is we should be keeping our services as short as we can. Uh, for COVID safety reasons. And this is just about as short as we can get and it's still be a communion service. So there are various changes. When we come to communion, I will come, I will bring the waiters to you, but I'll explain how that happens a little bit later on in the service. Those of you who have been following the regulations will know that at the moment we're not allowed to sing either. Uh, which is why I haven't given you the words to any hymns. Gillian is going to be playing some music and some hymns for us. When it's a hymn, you're welcome to hum along. But I didn't give the words out in case we were a bit totally enthusiastic and wanted to see. Um, if it turns out that maybe I should have done the words, we'll give the words for another one. So, a very warm welcome. I hope that this will continue to feel like proper church in the way that our services on Zoom have felt like proper church. It's taken a while to get used to a different way of doing things, but I think we've appreciated gathering. And it is with great joy that we're able to gather here today with all of the restrictions. It's lovely to see so many of you able to be here. Above all, social distance keeps safe for yourself and for others. Gillian is going to play some music for us at the beginning. Thank you, Gillian. of our order of service. When we come before God, we know that we have always failed to love him as he loves us. And so saying so, we have not always worshipped God, our Creator. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. We have not always followed Christ, our Saviour. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. We have not always trusted in the Holy Spirit, our guide. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God, who sent his Son into the world to save sinners, bring us his pardon and peace, now and forever. Amen. We hear the collect, the special prayer for this 
13th Sunday of the Trinity. Almighty God, who called your church to bear witness that you were in Christ, reconciling the world to yourself, help us to proclaim the good news of your love, that all who hear it may be drawn to you through him who was lifted up on the cross and raised with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. We're going to hear our first reading. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. Owe no one anything except to love one another. For the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. The commandments, you should not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and any other commandment are summed up in this word. Love your neighbour as yourself. Love does no wrong to a neighbour. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. Besides this, you know what time it is, how it is now the moment for you to wake from sleep. For salvation is nearest to us now than when we became believers. The night is far gone, the day is near. Let us then lay aside the works of darkness and put on the armour of light. Let us live honourably as in the day, not in revelling and drunkenness, not in debauchery and licentiousness, not in quarrelling and jealousy. Instead, put on the Lord Jesus Christ, and make no provision for the flesh to gratify its desire. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now we're going to hear our gospel reading. In order to not move around more than we need to, we'll remain seated to hear the gospel reading. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. If your brother or sister sins, go and point out their fault, just between the two of you. If they listen to you, you have won them over. But if they will not listen, take one or two others along so that every matter may be established by the testimony of two or three witnesses. If they still refuse to listen, tell it to the church. And if they refuse to listen even to the church, treat them as you would a pagan or tax collector. Truly, I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, Truly I tell you, that if two or three of you on earth agree about anything they ask for, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. For where two or three gather in my name, there am I with them. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. And so let's pray. Loving Father, as we share your word together now, may your love shine into our hearts, that we may indeed live for love. Amen. As I read much of the New Testament, I am struck again and again by how very, very practical Jesus and Paul were in their faith. By Jesus' time, the Ten Commandments 
that have been given to help of people newly released from slavery to live well with one another. Those original ten had grown into over 600 rules governing almost every single aspect of life and worship. Unsurprisingly, there were very few people who could actually keep all of those 600 odd laws. Jesus went right back to basics. He taught his followers that God's law is simply about loving God and loving one another. It's about having the same care for others as we have for ourselves. In today's reading from Romans, Paul suggests what this love for others might look like. Love does no harm, does no wrong to a neighbour. In today's world, particularly as I look at this global pandemic, I cannot help but be aware of how much harm I do to my neighbours every day. I am aware that our present pandemic has been predicted by scientists for decades as a natural outcome of our modern global lifestyle that causes such devastation to the climate and to the natural world. And as always, it is the poorest people of the world who suffer most from the consequences of my lifestyle. My thoughts as I reflect on this are that when Jesus was asked, who is my neighbour? He immediately told a parable, stretching the concept of neighbour way beyond how his hearers understood neighbour. What happens if we stretch our concept of neighbour way beyond what is comfortable? And is there any way we can justify not doing that? An image that has become important to me is that of a Jain monk sweeping the path in front of them with a soft broom. Jains believe that the only way to save one's own soul is to protect every other soul. And so the most central aspect of Jain teaching, the centre of all Jain ethics, is that of non-violence. Hence Jain monks sweep the path ahead to avoid accidentally crushing falling insects. Our culture tends to immediately suggest that's ridiculous. It's certainly difficult. And yet, with a more generous sense of neighbour than our culture usually has, it makes perfect sense. Can we consider animals to be our neighbours? Can we consider the natural world to be our neighbour? Can the natural world matter for itself? Or only because the devastation of the natural world affects people? We must each beside the answer to those questions for ourselves. It's relevant to me, personally, that the Bible tells us that God loves all that he has made. It is relevant to me, too, that the Hebrew word that is often translated as soul is also translated as the breath of God, or the breath of life, the breath of life that God breathed into every living creature at creation. The Bible is actually very clear. If humans have souls, then so does every living creature. So in small, everyday ways, I do seek to try to live in a way that causes the minimum of harm. And I do seek to be constantly improving in my efforts to do that. For example, I always cut plastic rings or rubber bands before I throw them out so that wildlife can't get trapped by them. I crush cans for the same reason. 
I try to buy only what I need and to keep things until they have genuinely worn out. Obviously, I get my electricity and gas supply from a supplier that invests only in renewables. I try to boycott not only products from areas of the world with poor human rights records, but also products that cause damage such as deforestation. And of course, I consider the impact of what I eat. I am very ready to admit I get it wrong often. And I often discover changes that I wish I'd made decades ago. But again and again, I do come back to that image of a Jane monk. And I find myself asking, what better picture could we possibly have as someone fulfilling the Christian calling to love our neighbour and do them no harm than that picture of a Jane monk carefully sweeping small creatures out of harm's way. And so I'd like to leave you with a question to take away and to ponder, and I hope you will ponder it often. It's this, what do you believe it means to love as God calls us to love? What do you believe it means to live in a way that does no harm to our neighbours? Let's pray. Loving God, you know our hearts. Help us to truly love, fully and without limits, as you love us. In Jesus' name, Amen. In a moment we're going to pray for ourselves and for the world. And at this start of the church's season of creation, we're going to use some prayers produced by the churches together in Britain and Ireland. But before we do, Julia is going to play a hymn for us. A hymn, let me read the words. A new commandment I give unto you, that you love one another as I have loved you. Thank you, Julia. And so we pray. We're using prayers following the format of St. Francis of Assisi. We pray in thanksgiving for Mother Earth, in whom all life is rooted, Brother Son, whose energy radiates life, Sister Water, who nurtures and revives us, and co-creatures with whom we live and for whom we are called to till and keep this garden. Creative Spirit, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All-powerful God, you are present in the whole universe and in the smallest of your creatures. You embrace with your tenderness all that exists. Pour out upon us the power of your love, that we may protect life and beauty. Fill us with peace, that we may live as brothers and sisters, harming no one. Creative Spirit, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O God of the poor, help us to rescue the abandoned and forgotten of this earth, so precious in your eyes. Bring healing to our lives, that we may protect the world and not prey on it, that we may sow beauty, not pollution and destruction. Touch the hearts of those who look only for gain at the expense of the poor and the earth. Creative Spirit, in your mercy, hear yeah. our prayer. Teach us to discover the worth of each thing, to be filled with awe and contemplation, to recognise that we are profoundly united with every creature as we journey towards your infinite light. Creative Spirit, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In the wake of the COVID pandemic, 
hear our cries and heal our world and all creatures. Inspire our hearts with a holy imagination to rise free from the demands to produce and consume, to imagine a just, sustainable way of living where all have enough and all may be restored. Creative Spirit, in your mercy, hear our prayer. During this season of creation, grant us courage to observe a Sabbath for our planet. Strengthen us with the faith to trust in your confidence. Inspire us with the creativity to share what we have been given. Teach us to be satisfied with enough and send your Holy Spirit to renew the face of the earth. Creative Spirit, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And in a moment of silence, we lift before God those named on our news sheet each week and anyone or anything that God places on our hearts this morning. Creative Spirit, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We thank you for being with us each day. Encourage us, we pray, in our struggle for justice, love and peace. Creative Spirit, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And so we come to the great Thanksgiving prayer, where we celebrate the gift of Christ himself to us, the greatest gift of God to us all. When we come to receive communion, I will bring it round to you as you remain in your seats because we have to socially distance and I could not see any way in which we could safely socially distance if we all came out of the front to receive communion. So remain in your seats and I will bring it to you. Also, I am not permitted to speak over the elements while they are uncovered. So this cloth will remain over the bread while I consecrate it. There's one way from top which I will consume. All of the rest will remain covered. And when I bring them round to you, as you hold out your hands, I will put the wafer in your hand without saying anything because I'm not supposed to speak over them. So I will invite you all to receive communion and then I will come round and give it to each of you silently in your places. I hope that makes sense and I hope we'll get used to it new ways of doing things very, very quickly. Let's turn to God in our great thanksgiving. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. Lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is right to praise you, Father, Lord of all creation, in your love, you made us for yourself. When we turned away, you did not reject us, but came to meet us in your Son. You embraced us as your children and welcomed us to sit and eat with you. In Christ, you shared our love, that we might live in him and he in us. He opened his arms of love upon the cross and made for all the perfect sacrifice for sin. On the night when he was betrayed, a supper with his friends, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. 
Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His body is the bread of life. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His blood is shed for all. As we proclaim his death and celebrate his rising in glory, send your Holy Spirit that this bread and this wine may be to us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy gifts, make us one in Christ, our risen Lord. With your whole church throughout the world, we offer you this sacrifice of praise and raise our voices to join the eternal song of heaven. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the past. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the past. And as our Saviour taught us, so we pray, using whichever version comes most comfortably to you. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are all one because of your share in one the body of Christ.
from section 13 on our order of service. We pray together. Father of lights, from whom comes every good and perfect gift, keep us in the light of Christ to shine in your world that all may believe in you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And Gillian is going to play our closing hymn for us, which I hope you will recognise and hum along silently. I'll say the word silently to yourself. Be still for the presence of the Lord. Thank you, Gillian. As I'm sure you will have read in the news sheet, we are not permitted to reserve refreshments after this service. We are strongly discouraged from remaining in church to chat with one another. But if we can socially distance outside and share one another's news and catch up, I'm sure that that is permitted. So, our final blessing. Again, taken from creation time. May God, who established the dance of creation, who marveled at the lilies of the field, who transforms chaos to order, lead us to transform our lives and the church to reflect God's glory in creation. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with us and with all those we love and remain with us always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen. Amen.